The story begins with an Aztec god of death and lightning, the Zolotol. As legends have it, he was a monstrous dog that guarded the sun god and ushered souls into the underworld every night. One day, as the gods began sacrificing each other for the newly created sun, Zolotol, a master transformer, managed to escape death by turning himself into a salamander. And that creature became known as the axolotl. In ancient Aztec tongue, the name axolotl translates to water monster. And just as the name suggests, these creatures lived their entire lives underwater using these adorable feather gills to breathe. After being driven to near extinction from their only natural habitats in central Mexico, these creatures are now found in more labs than anywhere else. This is because the axolotl is one of nature's scrappiest creatures with a unique ability that has baffled the scientific community for decades. They're pretty amazing, actually. So, I mean, obviously they're, they're famous for their ability to, to regenerate extreme structures like limbs. And we all know that, that, uh, that it's the only terrestrial animal that can, can regrow a limb. This is Dr. James Godwin. He studies axolotls for their unique regenerative abilities. So if you amputate at the level of the wrist, you, you regenerate the hand. If you amputate at the upper arm, you can regenerate a full arm. But the axolotl's special ability doesn't stop there. There's a whole laundry list of structures that they can regenerate. They can regenerate the front portion of their brain called the telecephalon. You can crush their spinal cord or sever the spinal cord. And in about three weeks, all of the spinal cord machinery will reconnect and uh, the, the, the tail and the legs will work again. They can regenerate impressively the testes. Most importantly, they can regenerate like a third of the heart ventricle. So if you amputate or injure a third of the heart, uh, it'll regrow that in the course of about 30 days to 60 days. Comparative to humans where a tiny little blockage in a heart uh, vessel will lead to extreme damage and eventually death. These guys are pretty amazing. Axolotls are able to achieve this sort of regeneration because they react to injuries in an entirely different way than humans. When we're injured, a wound from a severed limb simply gets covered with skin tissue. We don't do it as adults, really. We, we scar and we, we seal up the wound and we don't really replace damaged tissue. But not axolotls. They transform nearby cells into stem cells forming bones, skin, and veins in their exact original state. Scientists are still unable to explain why we react to injuries so differently. When humans or mice get injured, certain parts of the immune system participate in a different way that may lead to a scarring outcome, or it may block the ability to activate or awaken that regeneration process. The other thing is that there may be some uh, intrinsic difference in the salamander cell, right? The salamanders may have cells that are poised, ready to take place in a, in a reaction of regeneration, and that human cells could be somewhat locked down in their potential. Recently, researchers gained access to the full genome sequence of an axolotl, allowing them to identify specific genes and proteins that could hold the key to regeneration. Now that we have a sequenced genome and we have all of the molecular tools, I think that it's going to be a very exciting future. If we can learn from these regenerative organisms uh, that, and use them as a template, we might be able to sort of unlock uh, the, the natural way to regenerate.